with the sister. Um, I'm glad that I'm always grateful right now for any new content that shows up in Hulu or Netflix or anywhere, honestly, because like you said, it is what it has kept me going during all of this. But um, I, I, I was, you know, I've been following your career for a very long time and a big fan of looking, a big fan of a lot of the gay stuff that you've done, obviously. <laughs> but um, I, I think like what struck me was how impressed I am with your ability to cry. Right. I'm a very emotional person. I, I don't know if I kind of, th there's a story and I can't remember who told a story, but I think as an actor, you have this tiny portion of your brain that whatever happens to you in real life, there is a slight section of you that goes, remember what this feeling is. And you can kind of draw on that. And I've got lots of things I draw on throughout my life, like sad events or stories and stuff. But I think there's a tiny portion, which maybe makes us a bit, psychopathic but actors retain uh are able to retain the essence of a feeling in our psyche and i think for you know i can connect to dialogue the best dialogue can make you move you and take you places so i'm i'm always instinctive and the best dialogue if that leads me somewhere and you're working with people, then you're all playing the same game and you're all in the same zone. There's nothing better than doing that. And what other job can you cry your eyes out and everyone gives you a round of applause after? You don't do that anywhere else. You'll be straight up to HR and they'll be firing you or give, giving you like some time off work and a, and a bit of money. But it's like with acting, you can really, the, 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 you are kind of blessed with the fact that you can exercise emotions through the characters you play. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the story arc has a real poignancy to it that allows you to emote in the ways that you emote. I don't want to say too much because I know we have to be very careful here. But I will say in one of the more poignancies, I love that your gray hair got written in the show. Uh, it's acknowledged, yeah, in its, in its own line in the last episode. Um, yeah. I can't get away from it now. I cannot get away. It's happening. It's a reality. But you're seeing Nathan in, Nathan in three sections of his life. And that was what's so important to me is, is finding an authenticity at each stage of his life. And at the beginning, I wanted to make him a really hopeful, enthusiastic, kind guy that you knew was kind of being sexually awoken. And he's really like excited about the world. And that gets ripped away. And yeah. I wanted the loss of Nathan to be something that haunts him throughout the rest of his life. And as an audience, you feel such turmoil, even though he's a problematic and he's a flawed character, you feel such pain for the loss of what could have been. Mm. Oh, beautifully put. And my question is not beautiful at all. It's about whether or not you're getting any new interest from the LGBTQ community who has always been thirsty for you. And now I wonder if there's been an influx of like Silver Fox. Silver Daddy. Silver Daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got, I'm, I think, you know, I'm going to be 40 this year. So I'm definitely officially daddy, you know, status, I guess. And I have embraced my graying hair maybe I think it's pretty full gray now. Uh, so yeah, I, I, every now and then I'll get, you know, yes, Silver Fox, yes, Daddy comments in my Instagram and I'm all for it. That's encouraging. As somebody who is awaiting the day, and I'm not far off, I think, um, I, I, I am, I'm, I'm inspired. You've got, You've got an incredible, like, mane of hair there. That's Thank you. Well, it is a mane, actually, and that's due to quarantine and lockdown. But yeah, mane is the right word. <laughs> love it. Thank you. Stallion's hair you've got there, yeah.